Again, I join the hundreds of people here now and last night, and really all through this last week, um, who have been uh, loving and supporting you and praying for Floro every day and uh, continue to do so. Uh, so grateful for his life and his friendship with us, grateful for all the goodness that he brought into our lives, and grateful for his love with Eva and his children. And um, we saw last night, at least I did, um, um, again, the, the, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. Uh, the goodness that I've seen in, in Eva and Floro and, and in him particular um, is so ingrained in his daughters who uh, show such elegance and such um, um, strength and such beauty and I appreciate your words last night. I didn't learn a whole bunch new from what you said. Uh, um, I think we all know uh, the, the floro that you were describing. I heard a couple details, like I, I didn't know that he came from the Philippines, uh, I think as late in life as he did, and um, so I didn't know some of those details. But the qualities, um, there wasn't one that was surprising me, not one, because um, he wore them so uh, comfortably, and uh, he was very transparent in those qualities that he had. There is a saying, that's attributed to St. Francis. I say it every once in a while, but I'm told by the Franciscans that he never said it, so I'll take their word. But uh, I have it somewhere, and it's, it's uh, embroidered in a little picture frame, and it says this, preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. That's superb. A lot of people preach the gospel, including myself, but it doesn't have much power if it isn't lived. It can be just a bunch of words. But when people live the gospel, they don't need to say it. They're doing it. The word is alive in them. It's spoken by their actions. It's spoken by what they do, who they are. And if they also say it, wonderful. But it doesn't need to be said. Um, Floro, for me, exemplified a few things that were uh, stunning in him. I always noticed it from the first time I came five years ago. Uh, I always saw Floro as a very gentle man, uh, a gentle man. I got confused right at the very beginning, and today it was, it was just like the, one of the first days I was here because Flor came into the sacristy, and then I met Floro, and I thought, oh my God, now I'm gonna even be given the same masculine female version. Um, but think of it. Names are important. And uh, sometimes parents really get it right. They either name the person and it really fits the person, or sometimes that person grows into it. I've often said I, I think one of the worst names to have to carry would be the name of Jesus, Jesus. I mean, how do you live up to that? So I don't know if it's the reason, but I think that's why many people call, called Jesus call themselves Jesse or Chewy, because uh, that's a little easier. Um, how difficult to carry the sacredness of that name. But here we have this name, Floro, flower, flower. Uh, what a, a gentle image. And I saw in Floro a real flower that was not in bud form, but fully bloomed. He carried his name well. There was a gentleness about him, a decency that was incredible, a decent man. You know, there's a lot of men that are strong and boisterous and loud and competitive. He was decent in the fullest way possible. It showed in his transparency of his values and his virtues and his faith. He was a faith-filled man. Um, not only in his prayerfulness, in his belief, in his love for the gospel, but even in his work here as a sacristan, completely volunteer. Uh, when Father Perry was still in bed, he would be here opening the church. God bless him. So I've always appreciated him and all the sacristans because they really make things flow here. He was a respectful man in every way. He showed respect he showed respect for himself. At least this is all from my eyes. There are a couple times that um, I got to see, shall I say, all the way into his soul, because he would come up to me and say, can I go to confession? 
and it would be in the sacristy, and we'd just step aside. And, of course, I can't tell you what he said. I can't tell what anyone said. But I can tell you this, that in that moment, as, as often happens in the sacrament, I, I, I got to go into his soul and not just hear, quote, unquote, a sin, but the effect of it and his desire to move through it, out of it, away from it, and to, con to continue to grow. So I was really blessed uh, not to only experience what everybody experienced with Floro, but, but have some special moments where, um, where I was able to see very deeply into his heart and soul. I chose the gospel that I chose today because, um, well, one, I, I don't think I've used it 10 times in 39 years for a funeral. I use it very rarely. I only use it when it screams at me, this is the gospel for today, these beatitudes. I had a professor in the seminary who, <clears throat> when he taught this, and he knew the original languages, I do not, and he said, blessed is a weak word for this gospel. It's a good word, but it's weak for this gospel passage because he said it certainly wouldn't be translated this way, but he said, in his opinion, it would be better translated, tons of happiness for the poor in spirit, tons of happiness for those who mourn. Blessedness, really, when you think about it, how are we blessed? We're blessed by God. Blessedness is the very presence of God, so it's a very sacred way of saying this. But what he was trying to say is blessed by God in this way would create joy, profound joy, tons of happiness. But look at what he's saying, those who are blessed, of the poor in spirit. Why? Well, when you're poor, you have great need. If you're poor in terms of money, you need money. That's why some people would even go out and rob for it. If you're poor in terms of your hunger and need food, the church has always said it would be not a sin to steal food because everyone has a right to food. The church has always expressed that. And hunger, physical hunger for food, should not have to be endured by anybody, and yet it is by thousands, if not millions, on this planet. But to hunger... In your spirit is a song that we sang last night, and a beautiful song, another one that speaks about longing for God, longing. Longing is hungering, thirsting, needing, desiring. So tons of happiness. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit because their spirit will be filled. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn. You're all blessed today. We're all blessed in our mourning. Because in our mourning, again, we are hungering for something. We're hungering to be comforted. And we'll all do this for one another. We'll all remember Flor. We'll say things, remembering things about him and share them. And in the sharing of his life, in the sharing that we heard last night, it brings comfort. And it helps us to appreciate that all of us had a pretty similar picture almost the same of this man. Blessed are the meek, tons of happiness. When people are meek, they really stand before others and let others be others. They don't have to dominate all the time. Um, blessed are the meek. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for things to be right and good, for mercy, we perhaps get it this year in this year of mercy, those who know how to show mercy, uh, who have mercy alive in their hearts and lives. Blessed are the clean of heart. A clean heart create for me, O Lord, we pray. Blessed are those who seek peace, who make peace, who speak peace, who offer peace. Blessed are those, again, seems so strange, those persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Persecuted for the sake of righteousness. They are willing to seek after the right things, no matter the cost. And when they are persecuted for it, somehow deep in their spirit, they say, that's okay. 
and I will not let it go like a dog with a bone. We must seek it. We must go after it. And then, in a most climactic way possible, I think, uh, asserting uh, our, our faith-filled life as Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, Christians, blessed are you when they insult you and when they persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you. Falsely, it's not even the truth. And it's all because of me, Jesus says. And then he does say, rejoice, be glad, tons of happiness, for your reward will be great in heaven. Today, we celebrate a man who lived this word. This word was in him. Was he perfect? Nobody is. Was he a sinner? Absolutely. That's what makes us like him. He's like us. We all sin. And uh, he had his imperfections. But this man is a man who tried to live this word and did a very good job at doing it. That's why there's so many people here last night and today and have prayed for him all this time. And I don't think that Floro would ever stand up and say, this is me, this is me. He preached the word without ever even saying it. And that's what we all are called to do. So today we celebrate Floro. We thank God for Floro. We ask God to help us to live as he lived this word. And in the second reading today, it gives us a good reason why. Because Jesus says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In me, there will be no more death. There will be no more suffering, no more tears. And he's describing that in our suffering, tears, and even death, there is life. There's life eternal. That's what he offers us. That's what he's already given to Floro. And for that reason, we come even in the midst of sadness and loss and celebrate singing our Alleluia's today. <laughs>